today on Santa Monica Update. Santa Monica got its report card today. Is it worthy of a spot on the fridge? Stay tuned. Have you ever read something that made you turn green? I'll introduce you to some of the best of these books at the first annual Sustainable Literature Awards. All this and more coming up. I'm Gail Choice. Santa Monica Update. Your source for local news in Santa Monica. Welcome to Santa Monica Update, topping our show Sustainability Week in Santa Monica. As concerns about resource consumption rise, Santa Monica officials have been working aggressively to think, plan, and act in a more sustainable manner. Recently, the city outlined its goals and released their report card to the public. Reporter Ned Walsma was there. Report card day causes trepidation in youngsters. Not so for the city of Santa Monica and its sustainable city plan. Created in 1994, the Sustainable City Plan is designed to conserve and enhance our local resources, safeguard human health and the environment, maintain a healthy and diverse economy, and improve the livability and quality of life for the community. It was 13 years ago that Santa Monica first adopted a Sustainable City Plan, and it's an overarching way of looking at our environment, our economy, the quality of life in Santa Monica, and trying to make all those things sustainable. And one of the strengths, I think, of how we've gone about it is that we're looking qualitatively and quantitatively at actual results. I love the fact that we do this as a report card because I think that indicates that we see this as an ongoing learning experience. The report card evaluates the eight goal areas of the plan, assigning letters A through F. The primary grade given for each goal area provides a general measure of progress. If you are um, like a lot of us who are very busy and want an executive summary, that's why we made this report card for you. Basically, we took all of the data from all these indicators and synthesized it into easily understandable letter grades uh, in a report card. So the question on everybody's mind is, how do we do, right? Not so fast. Um, if you look at the primary grades, this is 2007 right here, we don't have a great report card. Um, we've gone down a couple areas, resource conservation, environmental public health. We've gone up a little bit in transportation. Uh, most of the other ones are status quo. So what does that tell us about the state of sustainability in Santa Monica? I think it tells us um, three things. Number one, it tells us that we have a very, very aggressive vision here for community sustainability, and it's not something that's gonna be easy to meet. It also tells us that we have a number of challenges, and some of these, as Shannon mentioned, are regional in nature. Things like housing, things like homelessness, things like transportation are not things that we, as a community of Santa Monica, can address just by ourselves. We have to go outside of our borders. And it also tells us that these issues, these sustainability issues that we want to address are really complex, and they're not things that we're gonna solve in a year. Hearing Santa Monica described as status quo may be difficult to comprehend, but it's important to keep the letter grades in perspective. It's Santa Monica is regularly recognized as one of the top 10 most sustainable cities in the country. That's a significant accomplishment, and it comes from our objective and transparent analysis of our progress towards meeting our goals. It's easy to get bogged down in numbers and facts and grades, but the important thing to remember is that Santa Monica is working hard every day to be a sustainable city for generations to come. A's for effort across the board. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Ned Rolspa. Letter grades aside, Santa Monica continues to serve as a sustainability model to the country and the world. The complete sustainable city plan and all the grades are available at the website on your screen. For 13 years now, Santa Monica has made huge strides in maintaining a sustainable city. An important part of spreading sustainability awareness is through learning and education. The community recently honored those who helped share this message through the magic of books. Reporter Marie Sam Sanchez brings us highlights from the inaugural event. Since it reopened in 2006, the Santa Monica Library has been nationally recognized as a beacon of sustainability in both practice and teaching. 
The library has a regular display that draws visitors to books that they can learn about sustainable situations. They regularly host events, movies, and speaker panels to engage the community in opportunities to express sustainability in their personal lives, in your professional life, in the way you play, in the way you get around. The library offers you a number of resources. As a complement to the city's commitment to sustainability, the library recently established the Green Prize Award to encourage and commend authors, illustrators, and publishers who produce quality books that broaden green awareness. Out of the 19 submissions, the Green Prize Committee honored seven books at the inaugural award ceremony. The winning works comprised of three books in the adult category, along with four youth books. A Pioneer Award was also given to the late Rachel Carson, whose lifelong collection of books helped launch the global environmental movement. Some often think that practicing a sustainable lifestyle is a daunting and inconvenient task. But in actuality, even the smallest and most simple changes can make a huge difference. You can choose to ride your bike. You can hop on the big blue bus. Even if you only do it once a month, you have chosen not to be a single occupant in a vehicle. Some of the other things that you can do are shop locally. Shop at the farmer's markets. We have four fresh, local, organic farmer's markets here in Santa Monica. And the winning editors of the LA edition of Greenopia hope their handy consumer's guide will also help make sustainable living a simple option for everyone. The problem is people really want to do the right thing. They want to buy products that are healthier for them and better for the environment. They just have no idea where to start looking. There, it's a very complicated issue. Every single um, decision we make every day you know, is, is pretty complicated and people tend to just default to what's easy. But So we're trying to make buying green easy. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Mary Sam Sanchez. Once again, congratulations to all the honorees. A complete list of the winning books can be found at the city's library website or at smepd.org, which will also include information on all sustainable works, programs, and divisions. For some drivers, red means stop, green means go, and yellow means speed up. But sometime in the near future, if your car is still in the intersection, when the light turns red, it could cost you several hundred dollars. The Santa Monica City Council has given the green light to a pilot program that will set up automatic red light enforcement cameras at three intersections. The tape will be reviewed by the SMPD. Violators will get a citation in the mail. In Santa Monica, collisions caused by red light violations in 2006 were about 4% of the total. Even our big blue bus is going green. City officials broke ground on a new eco-friendly maintenance facility. It will allow the big blue bus to grow and offer more service options. There will be room at the new maintenance yard for three articulated buses. They can carry more passengers than the regular buses. The building has many green features like solar panels, reclaimed water for landscaping, and light-colored concrete to keep the air temperature a little cooler. The three-year construction project is expected to begin in February and will be completed in early 2010. These streets are now off limits to Samo High students. A residential neighborhood near the school is now Zone U. The city can now enforce a permit-only parking rule between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. on weekdays. Without a permit, parking on some streets is limited to two hours. Zone U is on Bay Street between Lincoln and 6th Street and 6th Street between Pico and the eastern portion dead end. The beach bike path is about to be lit up. The city council has okayed money to install energy efficient light fixtures around town and new street lights on the bike path and the beach parking lots. Among the high priority streets for upgrades include Santa Monica Boulevard near 12th, Main Street from Pico to Strand, and a stretch of Ocean Avenue. The council appropriates money every year to upgrade the street light infrastructure. 
Those Mars rovers just keep on going. They're still working after more than three years. Find out if dust storms will threaten the twin rovers and their mission in a show at the SMC Planetarium. And if looking at the moon is your thing, the planetarium will have an outdoor observing event, weather permitting. There's more to a parking structure than a bunch of spaces and concrete. When it's next to Santa Monica Place, it has to have a certain look. Go see some of the design concepts for parking structures 7 and 8. The Bayside District wants to know what you think. The public presentation is on Thursday, October 25th at their offices. If you need more information, their number is on your screen. So you've got a story to tell. You'll get your chance to add to our country's oral history soon. We'll fill you in when we come back. Welcome back to Santa Monica Update. If you listen to NPR in the mornings, you're probably familiar with the StoryCorps National Storytelling Initiative. People interview each other in pairs, recalling a special moment or person. The idea is to create an oral history archive of stories told by average Americans. The Mobile Booth's high-tech recording studio is inside a silver Airstream trailer. And it's coming to the promenade in Santa Monica in November. You can make reservations online beginning October 25th at StoryCorps.net or call the number on your screen. Reservations go very quickly. Hope to hear you there. This is a hot car, and Santa Monica's got it. It's Honda's FCX fuel cell vehicle from American Honda. The city is participating in a demonstration project with Honda and the AQMD. The project will collect vehicle data and increase the use of the city's hydrogen station that opened last summer. And you will have a chance to test drive the FCX at the second annual Alt Car Expo later this month. We'll be there too and bring you a report. That's it for this edition of Santa Monica Update. I'm Gail Choice. Thanks for watching. Check it out at the Santa Monica Public Library. One of the side benefits of popular television programs like Dancing with the Stars and So You Think You Can Dance is a resurgence in interest in dance classes. The city offers classes from samba to belly dancing. Those interested in taking up dance on their own should stop by the Santa Monica Public Library. They'll find both the DVD, Classical Baby the Dance Show, and the videotape African Healing Dance. Try out a few steps with the Ballroom Dancing Basics DVD, then see how the masters do it with the DVD Ballroom Dancing, the International Championships. Those interested in taking their dancing and acting interests to a professional level should check out the book, How to Make It in Musicals, The Insider's Guide to a Career as a Singer-Dancer. For more info, visit the library's website at www.smpl.org.